welcome to Starcraft Support the Maker. And here today we have the always gorgeous Emma Varnum. <laughs> Hi, Emma. Hello. Hello. It's so <laughs> nice to see you. I'm really well. Really yeah. well. I yeah. We've had a bit of COVID oh. in our house, oh. but but we are okay at the moment. So that's good, isn't it? Good. So yes. Yeah. No, we're really well. Thank you. Um, today I wanted to just introduce you to people that don't know you out in Starcraft land and um, find out a little bit more about you. I've known you for a little while now, a fair few years. Yes. I? Yeah. Yes. Um, and um, what, what I first, the first question I wanted to, to ask you was how did you actually become a designer? Because that's not your full time job. No. So how did you get started designing? So I um I entered a competition ah. in, in knitting magazine and I designed some children's wear and um, it was really at the beginning of um, my son being a, time, well, a baby and I really felt that um, the jumpers that were around, um, many of them didn't really represent what I wanted him to wear. Hmm. So um, he's quite old now. But um, so I started um, knitting and then they um, liked what I did and I started designing for knitting magazine um, and I, I love to learn new things. And so I really educated myself in the kind of um, pattern writing, tech editing aspect of that. So um, I've always drawn, I've always sort of and made my own clothes that so there was a kind of connection there um, and all of um, this whilst you had a small baby yeah oh my god yes <laughs> yes I, I i yeah i know i i don't know why but i just really i loved i loved it and so for a couple of years i used to do knitwear designing and then um, I started crocheting, so mm -hmm. um, I probably now, um, knitting is very much a kind of hobby space for me. That's where I, I don't design, I can, but I don't tend to design now in, knit, in knitwear. Mm -hmm. I tend to concentrate in crochet now. Um, and I started to, I taught myself how to crochet and then this was really at the beginning of the resurgence of crochet. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and once you've learned how to kind of pattern writing for knitting, it's quite easy to do for crochet, but you have to really think the, the sort of the stitch um, numbers are very different mm. and the stitch lengths are very different. But um, in, a, in, a, in essence, it's very similar. Yeah. So, yeah, I started designing crochet and um, I love amigurumi. I love working in the round. And when I, when I found that you could do that, that just blew my mind. Um, and and I, I just started um, designing. Uh, I sort of evolved. So I evolved into making a lot of toys, making a lot of amigurumi. And um, yeah, so I, I probably... my my design work started with magazines so I love working with the magazines and you know because you've been a magazine editor it's really important that you um meet your deadlines yes you re reply promptly to queries yes you put in your invoices you put your patterns through promptly because um and they really appreciate that so I think um because I I similarly you know um I, I was an art curator so in many ways when you're planning exhibitions when you're planning schedules that's yes. like planning a magazine schedule yes. so I understood the importance for magazine editors to meet their schedules and they're always working like um six to twelve months ahead of yourself so mentally my brain was aligned with that thinking yeah. um, and so I found it really um, a really wonderful way to work um, and people call it a side hustle don't they <laughs> so, um, I think it yeah so it's, a, it's an important I never 
I have, I'm a, I'm a public servant. I love what I do as a public servant. I'm very passionate about that. I'm very dedicated to it. And it's such a privilege to do that. And that's part of who I am. And it, another part of who I am is being a, a crochet and knitwear designer. So I never want to disrespect either aspects of no. my life. Um, they're equally important to me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and being a professional in both is really important to me. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I hope I am in both. Oh, you um, definitely. You definitely are. So, so where do you get your inspiration from? I've been seeing some of your lovely um, are they watercolors on Instagram. <laughs> what? Yes. Of your garden, yes. and they're at, they're so uh, so lovely. Is that where you get your inspiration from, from out in nature, or what else inspires you? So often, the garden, the garden's really important, and I love our garden, and um, my parents are great gardeners. I do read a lot, mm -hmm. um, and when I mean that, I sort of, I absorb, um, I love to read cookery books and I'll be um, gardening books and um, I'll do a lot of reading around um, what's what's new, what's happening. Um, so I'll do quite a bit of research. At all time. I'm really, I'm a very inquisitive person. I'm not, I don't know, nosy is not the right word, inquisitive person. Mm -hmm. So I'm always interested in what's um, something different. And I guess um, your curating background yeah. helps with being able to do the research and yes definitely i think you you yes you learn researching i suppose mm -hmm. and you learn to follow a rabbit hole yes so i think for all of us um that's become easier and easier in terms of um trends and fashions and and uh themes and um but you know, when you're thinking about Pinterest, you're thinking about Instagram, you're able to go down a rabbit hole, aren't you? And to go, mm. where has that originated from? Where has that idea come from? What, what's the source of that? Yeah. So that's an aspect. But then people are an inspiration to me. So when I come to um, kind of the toys I design, um, they're usually based on a conversation so mostly conversations are what inspire me. So someone saying, oh, you know, my son, he really loves, I don't know, a frog or, and that, that'll store away into my head. Mm. And um, I might then make that child a frog and that will be a gift from me to them. And then there'll be an evolving idea of design and suddenly, you know, a frog will appear in, in a book or an elephant will appear in a book based really on a conversation with a friend or with a child. And the, my most favourite, my most favourite designs are really based on a conversation with a child. Oh. And for me, um, if a child loves what you design uh, literally you can see it in their eyes there's no faking that that that's that's it that's forget everything else that's the moment that's, that's the reason the you do it yeah so once you've got your inspiration and you've got your idea mm -hmm. how do you start so i will usually draw what i want to make definitely so there are um so you were mentioning the article i i started looking at doing watercolors again because i had been designing some new toys for a book um that i'm gonna work on and i thought i tend to use kind of pencil and i go to then uh, with a black liner and i do a, an outline and then i'll and then i'll sort of use uh crayons um watercolor pencils to kind of give you a, a color impression mm -hmm. um, but and I thought the other day why don't I just try watercolor because it will give you a really good coverage for the color I want and I started doing it and I was really enjoying it I thought <laughs> oh, I really love doing this and um, it's giving a much better overall look to the color I wanted to use for this animal um, so then I started doing more watercolors of what does my what I'm trying to use during this COVID period, 
a kind of a snapshot of a day and trying to do a creative thing in the middle of the day or at the end of the day. Um, so when I'm designing for a book um, or thinking about a proposal, I'll draw each animal out mm -hmm. and then th that'll give an impression. Mm -hmm. And it tends to be, that's probably it. That's, that'll be, if they like, you know, if the publisher likes it or magazine likes it, that it won't stray too much from that. Um, and then it's a question of, you've got that in front of you as a reference point. And even I had this yesterday. So I was making an animal and I thought, how does, what did I think the nose was going to look like? And I said, I said to Robert and I was crocheting and we were watching television and I'm crocheting and I said, just out loud, but what was the nose? And he just looked at me and went, what are you talking about? <laughs> so then I, I tend to, when I've got my designs, I tend to, to photograph them and I'll keep them quite, um, high on my um, photograph list on my phone yeah. and I'll use those as reference points then yeah. as kind of what did I think it was going to look like um, and then I'll just make it and then they'll rip back so I'm a great believer in ripping back if I don't like it right so and you've you've published or you've written a lot of books now haven't you how many is it now I think it's eight or nine. <laughs> which, was one? which was the first one? So the first one was crocheted key rings and bag charms, oh. which sounds ridiculous, but it's it's kind of a kind of cute little things. When I did it, I um I just I proposed the book because I was making quite a few of them. Um, for friends and I thought if somebody else writes this book I'm going to be really annoyed. <laughs> Have you ever had a publisher before that? No. So I put a proposal together. I always say this to people. People, you know, um, I don't know what you think because, because you've been in a commissioning role. People are really scared of doing stuff aren't they? So yeah, I think they are sometimes, yes, it, it's that sort of imposter syndrome sometimes or just because you haven't done it before doesn't mean that you can't. No, so I just kind of thought, well, why don't I try? And most of, most of the fun I've had in crochet and knitting has been because I've gone, well, why don't I try? So what's the worst that could happen? You what know, fantastic, yeah, what a fantastic example. I mean, there's so many things we hold ourselves back from, isn't there, because of that? Yeah, so I kind of just go, I want, I would really like to write this book. I think it's a really good idea. You have to explain it, and there has to be some kind of thought behind it. And, um, you know, what's who are you trying to write it for? What's what's the concept? You can't be too random, you can't go all the toys of the world you have to go yeah. you know like farm animals you know have to yeah. ha have to hone you have to yes. pitch a, an idea but i you know why not I, it has to be know, deliverable as well what you it has to be deliverable and you have to be able to i'm kind of rolling everything into one here but you have to be able to meet the deadline that you say you're going to meet yeah. You have to honour the process, I think. You have to honour the people you're working with. But why not? So, yeah, so I just pitched the book and they were lovely and they liked it and we worked on it. And then, um, as is often the way, the relationship was established. And, um, and uh, I mean, you, you tell me. I think if you can be consistent in your deliverable, you know, as you say, that you can deliver on time um, that you'll be willing to respond um, in a timely fashion mm -hmm. and you'll and you'll put the work in to finish it because the worst thing Julia and you know this mm -hmm. the worst thing about finishing a project is all the fiddly bit at the end <laughs> you know when when you get to I hate it I mean tech editors are the most amazing people in the world I love them 
because I often, you know, when you write something, you just don't see the mistakes you make. Mm. And I really do apologize to anybody who's made <laughs> items of mine who've got mistakes. But like, you create it and you, you don't go out to make mistakes, but there's always typos in everything you write. Yes, in. yes, it's inevitable, isn't it? It's, a, it's like computer cult code. You think of the number of computer programs that they send out a patch for on another patch. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you're, you're, the way you talk about it, um, there has to be a huge dose of creativity in there as well. You must be very, very creative. It's not just delivering on time, is it? It's having the ideas to begin with. I, I love, I mean, literally I'm making, um, making some toys for the next book at the moment. I just, giddy as a kipper, <laughs> literally giddy as a kipper. I, I absolutely, I am a child, I think really at, at heart. Yeah. And which, I am. Is your, which is your best selling book? So crocheted succulents. <laughs> oh, think. and I can see some behind you. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously not put here for today. Um, <laughs> uh, so this, well, the, talk about Giddy as a Kipper. So when I've talked about it, but when I created this, this is the first one, it, it was slightly different. I, you know, I've just made this one not, not that long ago. When I put this together and I, I bought the yarn for I literally i was in hysterics by myself <laughs> going this is hysterical this is hilarious <laughs> this i'm so you know and just the joy of creating something that just makes you smile is and yes. um, if you mix this up this design with other real plants i can guarantee you most people will take ages to work, to think that this and it it's ridiculous because you can see that it's kind of plastic you know i made kind of i made one with um uh there's a blog there's a blog post on the starcraft blog where yeah. i made one with um special dk and eskimo and it was white yes. um and then i used all the ends of yarn that i had to stuff it actually which was a really good tip because we all end yeah. up with lots of ends of yarn and i kept them but it yeah. just looks fantastic i've got a tiny little terracotta pot and it just looks amazing they are brilliant and such fun they're and they're really they are a lot of fun yes because the eskimo one makes really great spikes and you can then cut the 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 strands down so you can make it so you can have so much fun and then lots of different colors and they're really quite quick to make as well and um, so I have real succulents in our house and I just mix them up together and they, and people don't realize, they just don't realize. So that one, that book is, is really, um, it's gone to different, it's been lots of different languages as well. So I think in essence, um, probably it has to be that one. And then uh, cute crocheted animals, which is oh, yeah. um, with the rabbit and my cat Stanley is on the front of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that one. I love that book with I love the outfits. The outfits are so, I think when I was a girl I used to just love dressing up my dolls in different outfits. I think I knitted some of them and but yes, all the super cute outfits. Isn't there a duffel coat or, or the something? duffel coat? Yeah. The duffel coat is definitely I mean the funny thing about that book and I've tried to do it, it, it I try to make it very British yes quirky. so it's and quirky so we have our own mad and that yellow duffel coat is a Bowden uh, <laughs> well, it's, sea, it's sea salt sorry it's a sea salt duffel coat you know which many people have put their children in yeah. and we've all been there even in the 70s you could be wearing a yellow do you know, Southwester oh, yeah. kind of like plus. So we have this sense of it resonates with us, that bright yes. yellow. Yes. Um, and like the kind of stripy t-shirt that many, you know, which many children wear on the beach. And I was trying to create things where if you made something for a child, they would have a sense that you could, you can match it to what they would like to wear themselves. Oh, it's so, charming. And it's, and, and I find, the pattern's very easy to follow. 
I hope so. Yeah, no, they're they're very 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 sensibly written in a way. Just the the the, the thought that you put into the process of what the crochet is going to to experience is um is fantastic. So if you were looking at a project for a beginner to try out, would you say the the succulents would be a good place to start? Yes, definitely. Because you can just trying to see. So um she's head preaching. So this is a a tiny version. But um if you're gonna do um working in the round or amigurumi is it? so that's a japanese word can you just hold it up to the camera a little bit oh yeah look at that so that's so, not got, that's not that's just a plain yarn with some a little bit of sewing isn't it a little bit of yeah yarn. so it's just like taking a, a few large stitches and then it's got a button in the middle yeah that would make a uh, great pin cushion it would make a it does make a great pin cushion i've got some upstairs so it's so easy yeah um to do and it's like a that's the soil but that's the ball um and you're just increasing doing a few rounds straight yeah. rounds and then decreasing and then that's virtually i think maybe a little larger the actual circle but then you're squishing it down with yes with the stitches yes. um and you'll loads of people make pumpkins i make pumpkins in a similar way um but it's really easy to do so once you've done that then if you're making a um, a toy it's the same principles really i've, I've been making some bunnies recently but it's oh, it's the same principle really yes um, that it's you're around. using yeah yeah um, i can see that i tend to i mean i suppose what's different i have a great friend that i work with and um i taught her to crochet and then she's a big fan of um jane crowfoot and uh -huh. has now eclipsed me in her skill base you know <laughs> really really annoying um but um she had done um a, she's done quite a few different animals with really popular designers right um and she always said, I don't fancy doing yours, Emma. I was oh. like, none taken. <laughs> um, but um, recently she's, she's made some of my toys. Um, what I try to do is, is tell you where to place the legs, and where the arms are placed and where the ears are placed. Yes. And for me, that's really important because I think when you're, things can, really alter the look of an animal yes. or a toy yes. um, by those small details and people get really frustrated they say my rabbit doesn't look like how you've created it yes. what i've tried to do is i've evolved writing toy designs is to help people with the accuracy you don't want to do that that's absolutely fine because mm. where you place ears where you place eyes um the further the the bigger the eyes and the further they are apart a more cute oh, right. will look. Oh, okay. so, um, and the, the closer they are, the more inquisitive they look. All <laughs> of those things, all of those things, you know, babies seem to have really big eyes. Mm. All baby animals have big eyes mm. and they seem far apart. Mm. And as we get older, it kind of all falls more into the center. Um, so that affects the way an animal looks. But so I try and really, really hard to place things for people and mm. if they choose choose not to do that's absolutely fine but it really helps people to try and get they've not tried it before yeah 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 and so you say you've got um you're working on a book at the moment can you tell uh -huh. us anything about that um really it is at the early stages oh okay um i it, yeah i know be animals and there'll be toys Oh, so I've just done uh, Cute Crushed Wild Animals, which is a sort of sequel. Isn't there a panda in that? It's a panda. Yeah. A lion. I have got one here. Oh, lion. there we go. Oh, so cute. The elephants are mega cute. Yeah. Um, zebra, obviously. Uh, <laughs> monkeys, monkeys. Which yes. People love monkeys. Um, I... And the clothes from that book 
can be worn by the animals in the first book. So oh, it extends the wardrobe um, out into things like pajamas and swimwear. Yeah. I've <laughs> I'm obviously I'm living my you know fashion designer dreams through the through the medium of small toys. <laughs> But, oh, no. yeah. Fair enough. So I have a I have a couple of questions um, for you. Thomasina May says she likes making cute crocheted animals in DK. Can you suggest a suitable DK yarn that won't bobble after it's played with? Oh wow. Well, I personally I know this. I would I would use special DK, Starcraft special DK. Mm -hmm. Um, and also life. So I made some toys. I designed some toys for Starcraft last year. Bellissima uh -huh. as well, but Bellissima slight it has a slight. Um, it's slightly thinner in its gauge. But if you did all of your Bellissima, um, yes. all of your toys using Bellissima, and it's a really good color palette mm. that has a lovely sheen to it, which will give you it wears really well. Mm -hmm. But if you're using Bellissima, use it all the way through, so all of yes. every bit of the toy and all the animals. But then also just I will keep to one, um, keep to one make. So if you're going to use Starcraft Special DK, I don't think it bubbles myself. No. Um, and but we'll use it for everything that you're going to create and there's such a big color palette anyway loads there? so much to choose from yes. um karen phillips asks have you got any advice on how to substitute other yarns from from the patterns in your book she says i love your patterns but i'm trying to use my stash in lockdown oh mm. very commendable mm. yes so you were just saying then if you use the same yarn all the way through yeah so I think um, I might be wrong, but say a DK yarn is a 22 stitch. I know by 28 rows. I might be right, the wrong. Some way. of them are 22 by 30. Some are 20. Yeah, 22 by 28 or 22 by 30. Mm -hmm. Then use the same gauge. So, and you can you you can do that. So, for instance. I know a couple of really popular double knit makes have exactly the same stitch tension mm -hmm. gauge. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what you can do if you go on an online um, website, some online websites have the facility to suggest a yarn alternative. Right. Oh, that's a good so, but, And also so Ravelry, Ravelry do alternatives as totally, well. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So you can look at that, yeah. but in general, especially with toys, if you keep, um, so I used um, Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino in my first book mm -hmm. um, exclusively. That's a sport weight, so it's slightly thinner, lighter than a double knit. Mm -hmm. um, now, there are more sport weight yarns around now than there have been. In previous years but I've always said to people if you make your toys in a double knit just make all the clothes in a double knit yeah just keep consistent Everything. keep it consistent yeah yeah and if, finally do you have any tips for us for lockdown how to keep our spirits up or, or how to be kind to ourselves oh definitely so definitely be kind I have so I've been making, um, I've got it here. Um, I've been making a um, a kind of vintage V-stitch blanket and using oh, up yeah. all of my stash. Blimey. And I was trying to do, that. mostly this is um, special DK, Starcraft special DK. There's some of the new colours in here, uh, like the apple. Oh, it's lovely, that apple, isn't it? Yeah. I like Clementine um, as well. Is that Clementine a bit further down? Yeah. Yeah. This one as well. This yellow is gorgeous. Um, so, and I've been doing this and it's kind of, I've done seven rows and then 
for each day of the week and then divided it with a cream um, ah, and then a seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do you just delve into a mystery bag to pull out I the next I just delve one? into a mystery bag and I've tried to do a um, sort of each seven represents a week of lockdown. I think wow. I'm behind Juliet, to be honest with you. Because <laughs> um, I've, I've kind of done, but I can catch up quite quickly. Um, so I was trying to do one for every day of lockdown, one, um, one set of stripes for every week. Um, yeah, and just kind of mixing up and not caring too much about what the colour was. Um, it works. It looks fantastic. And that's the great thing about crochet. The bet, the more clashes, the better. Yeah, I think. Yeah, um, I think sometimes knitters are a bit scared of colour, aren't they? I mean, if you're a stranded knitter or fair arm knitter, then I guess you're more used to colour. But yeah, doing something like that in knitting might be a bit scary, mightn't it? Yeah, I know. So I think, yeah. I mean, look at. I mean, look at it's the word k facet if yeah. you know but this is is really based on that make do and mend wartime um aesthetic of just yeah. you, all you had was what you had available yeah and then that frees you up just to go look i'm not just enjoy doing it um and then if you have a garden then you can use blankets and things mm -hmm. in the garden so it's um that's what I've been doing is really sitting outside and having this on my lap and, and in uh, we're fortunate to have that space and of course not everybody does but um just to sit out in the garden and use that time and and um decompress yeah in lockdown to really I want to show you I know this is I I you taught me to how to fair isle <laughs> did you I did, did. And staking as well, didn't I? And staking. So oh, I finished. Emma, that's beautiful. What's the it's, pattern? So it's by um, Caitlin Hunter. Oh yes, I know. Yeah. It's Birkin, and it's from oh, Lane. It's a Birkin. Yeah. Oh, I love the colours you've put together. I know it's totally different, isn't it? In a different. I just don't know if it's going to fit Juliet. To be honest, but I haven't. I haven't um, blocked it yet. What you think is too small or too big? Mm, I think it's a bit too small. But well, you can I always, love... if it's too small, you can always stick it. Yeah, well, I think I will if it's too oh, small. Yeah. yeah. It so, looks fantastic. Well done, you. So I finished it in yeah. lockdown because it was <laughs> in. I, it's not often that I've got whipped, but this one was definitely in the project bag for too long. Because like this is the wrong season to be knitting with this pure wool. <laughs> I don't totally believe in the wrong not not knitting with wool in the summer, but um, yeah, it was. I was so delighted. So you can, I think, lockdown, do things which bring you joy. Mm. I say, definitely. Well, and thank I'm... you so much, Emma. It's been lovely to catch up with you. And, so lovely uh, to stay see you. safe and well. Thank you. You're so kind. It's so lovely to speak to everybody. And um, thank you for popping in. It's um, really, really joyful. I miss all the faces, really. And I cannot wait to get, when I get the first opportunity to kind of sit with a group of knitters and crochets and just sit around a table with a with a hot drink and just um, pass that time. It's so precious. It's so, a date. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're really good. I can't wait. Can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. See you. Bye.